Um, so I'd like to, this was just a bit about meaningful work and the platform, and I'd like to just transition over to digital tr transformation and, and what it is uh, to some extent. And from there on, we'll talk about uh, what that process of skilled volunteering looks like and how to get from that A to Z and, and then start the next stage of more skilled volunteering. So digital transformation is, is really affecting all of us today. Um, these are some of the areas which we found um, that are, are most in need for nonprofits to start looking at, uh, analyzing and finding out where they can really benefit from digital transformation in these areas. Um, so in marketing, that might look like digital advertising, segmentation, really optimizing their web websites and landing pages, uh, building funnels for donors to go through. Um, and for human resources, that might be uh, hybrid or virtual offices, uh, engaging with employees, especially uh, in creating equity, diversity, and inclusion across uh, these online spaces, which is quite difficult. Uh, for operations, uh, there's new business models that are available now uh, to try out, uh, being able to measure that client experience um, and be able to deliver your programs online. Um, with technical infrastructure, some examples are being able to access employee and client and donor data and generate insights, uh, making sure that your uh, systems are cyber secure as well as effective. With finance and fundraising, new channels uh, every day, gamification of, of, of finance and fundraising and cryptocurrency are some really interesting new trends. Uh, and with impact measurement and communication, being able to tell your story uh, on these digital platforms, being able to measure the progress and also set KPIs. Um, and talking to nonprofits, these are some of the, the challenges that we've uh, been able to help them uh, work through, but also recognize the immense amount of expertise that, that that is available in these areas within nonprofits and also within uh, volunteers and companies. Um, so I will now kind of talk about um, some of the uh, benefits of transformation and some of the challenges. Uh, so really uh, being able to uh, transition over to some of these digital technologies can lead to resilience and flexibility. Uh, you can really increase value to your audiences and even scale your impact at, at different levels. However, it is expensive. Uh, building websites can cost a lot of money. For example, um, there's a steep learning curve uh, in terms of all the available technologies. There's so many technologies every day, like what's the right one for me right now? Uh, what's the right platform to use, for example? And then uh, it always requires building and updating and optimizing uh, your system. So there's a continuous work uh, that, that needs to happen every year or every month. Um, so one way uh, to address uh, this challenge is by really uh, looking at skill-based volunteering. And so I'd like to talk about what skill-based volunteering is. And it's really aligning a volunteer skills and experience with the task at hand uh, and increasing the value, thereby increasing the value of the volunteer's time and impact. Um, so you might know this as pro bono. Uh, it's it's a, definitely a type of skill-based volunteering. Um, and um, it can really be centered around knowledge. So just um, knowing what's the next step and, and sort of a, what a traditional consultant might help you with. Um, and or also an implementation uh, where you have a project that's defined and it just needs to be completed uh, or a mix of both. And um, today I'm going to walk you through a resource uh, called capacitycommons.org, uh, which uh, I will make sure to link um, at some point and send in the resources. But this is a really great website, which just really walks you through the a to Z of, of skill-based volunteering and how to get started and how to engage uh, effectively. Um, the other thing I'd like to add is skill-based volunteering is one solution to addressing this challenge. It's definitely possible to hire freelancers, agencies, and even interns. Uh, there's many grants available for these activities. Um, and some of the advantages of skill-based volunteering is they tend to have many years of experience in what you need, um, but the limitation might be at uh, a, like a lower weekly time commitment and, and turnover as well. Um, so for the rest of the presentation, I'm gonna go through these the six step process um, that is adapted from the seven steps of Capacity Commons uh, that uh, will kind of explain to you how um, to kind of approach skill-based volunteering at your organization. And I'd love to see um, sort of, feel free to ask any questions at any point uh, and would love to hear your experiences through these steps or any other frameworks that you've been using. Um, so the six steps are first to prepare your organization, scope out the opportunity, source the volunteer or the team, uh, implement that project and then evaluate the results. And then 
six and, and seven is, is really celebrating and, and repeating. Seven is, there's like the seventh step in, in the capacity commons, but we've just uh, kept it down to six for, for this presentation. So um, step one, it's preparing your organization. Um, so really identifying readiness and high priority areas. So some questions uh, to ask yourself is, is there a need for more capacity in my org and, and where is that need? Uh, do I have the bandwidth uh, or does my org have the bandwidth to engage with volunteers? Because it does take time to recruit, uh, to manage and to, um, again, do all the steps in, in the six step process. Um, and is there buy-in from my colleagues? Will they be able to support the volunteers if I'm not able to work with them? And um, is this something that my organization is ready for right now? Um, how we can help is meaningful work is you can definitely call our team. Uh, we have a worksheet and checklist you can go through and um, also complete our quick needs assessment uh, to identify some areas where uh, skill-based volunteering might be a good fit for you. Uh, some ways to identify these areas, uh, just some brainstorming. You can go from the operational perspective where you're looking at all the different key uh, functions of your organizations and, and figure out uh, where there is, is growth uh, needed or within that or are there any problems you're facing. Uh, the other way to look at it is maybe through a traditional role perspective. So you might look at the different departments of your organization and identify you know, uh, talk to the, the members who are working on these, these aspects and say, you know, um, what's missing right now? What would you need to achieve that next step um, in performance or um, maybe uh, ha, um, ways to identify what that next step could be as well. Um, so from step one is just making sure you're ready, making sure you have a need for it and the capacity to engage. Uh, step two is around scoping the opportunity. And so here's some questions to consider when you are trying to have a better idea of that area of, of say it's, it's marketing and, and you want to roll out the next marketing campaign, uh, you might want to think about these questions. Uh, what is your organization's core need? And this is different from the goal. So the core need might be something around, um, say your organization really wants to uh, engage with the audience, um, with a specific audience that you haven't been able to engage with. Um, that could be a, a core need. Um, and the project goal would be, how can you specifically engage with that audience? So the reason the core need is there is because um, there might be many ways to achieve the core need. And perhaps the solution that you've proposed might change a bit depending on the input from the volunteers. Um, but defining that project goal is really important and also going back and forth with the volunteers once they get started on, on that project goal is, is a, a really um, interesting exercise. Uh, then you want to talk about what are the phases, um, what are that interim milestones and deliverables, and how do you define success um, halfway through the uh, uh, through the project or all the way at the end, and maybe it's a few months or it's a few weeks long, or maybe it's just a one-time advising session. Either way, um, you can approach them quite differently, but you still would want to think about what success looks like for you. Um, and then what is a range of acceptable timelines and you might have an ideal timeline, which you should definitely communicate, uh, but also think about the time it takes to maybe find the right volunteer or any sort of contingencies along the way if, if something were to happen uh, with communication or uh, with the volunteer, do you have a plan to kind of uh, some, some wiggle room or, um, in that timeline? And uh, what roles do you need? How many volunteers, what skill sets, and how much capacity? So maybe if you're planning out a volunteer campaign for, or sorry, a marketing campaign, for example, you might want to um, have one session for advising with a, an expert in marketing, and then have another uh, project based on implementing those um, recommendations. And this could be applied to any other area of the organization as well. Um, so how can we help as meaningful work? Um, you can definitely speak with a member of our team to value, assess, and map out the project. Um, and these are also really cool steps. So valuing means um, what would be that the time, uh, the value of that time that is provided uh, to, to you as an organization. That's a nice way to measure uh, sometimes um, the, uh, the impact that could be created. Um, being able to assess and get some feedback on this uh, project plan is super important, as well as really mapping out the project so you know exactly uh, 
how the the deliverables and tasks flow from one end of the project to the other. Um, and I love Eli's comment here about, yeah, it does look like putting together a job description for a contractor with maybe a bit more detail. Um, we can also help with breaking out a big, a large project into smaller chunks suitable for skill-based volunteers, something to think about due to capacity. And we also have posting templates on our website. So it actually comes with some pre-filled phases and milestones for the most common opportunities that you can then, then modify just so it takes some burden off of you as well. Um, so now that we've scoped out our opportunity, and, and just to add to this, uh, in, in the Capacity Commons website, you can have many detailed exercises for each of these steps. So I'd really encourage you to check that out uh, once you do start um, skill-based volunteering. Um, so talking about sourcing, so now that we have the opportunity sourced and uh, scoped out, sorry, the opportunity scoped out, uh, we want to figure out how to source um, the opportunity uh, and get the right volunteers to do the job. Um, so there's a few ways. You can definitely make a posting on your website and share it through your social media, a LinkedIn um, or job postings is, is another good example of how you can get it well known. You can reach out to your contacts and uh, different volunteer networks that you're a part of. Uh, you can also reach out to companies. Um, so some companies will have programs that are really uh, specific and some might be more general. Uh, I know, for example, Traction on Demand has a program where they'll help your nonprofit with Salesforce implementation. Um, and that's a really focused program that you can apply for. Um, whereas other companies might be open to more of a, a free form uh, arrangement if you do engage with them. You can also post on govolunteer.ca and local volunteer centers. They often have nice databases where you can post. Um, there's also other similar uh, companies to us, which include Volunteer Match, Do Some Good and Purposely in, in Vancouver. Uh, they can definitely check out. Um, in the States, there's Cashifier, which is a, a really cool website, which looks at um, engaging with skill-based volunteers. Uh, and finally, you can also do this through Meaningful Work. And I'll just chat about our process and, and how it works on our end. Um, so once you have your scoped opportunity, uh, you can create that through our templates or on your own. Uh, we'll work hard to, to really match a volunteer or a team to you. So we have some automated matching uh, based on our algorithm, but we also have people uh, in our team that are able to, to talk to companies and find that uh, a great volunteer for you. Um, and just to, just to be clear, we're not just open, uh, we don't just work with companies, but we're also um, accept individuals, uh, volunteers who are at any stage, um, uh, maybe they they have some career experience, they have some minimal experience, but they might be working right now, they might be switching jobs, they're also really um, keen to volunteer, they can also join the platform as well. We then uh, review applications uh, from volunteers. Um, so that would be on your end, you can see everyone who applied uh, to that opportunity. Um, there's a quick 15 minute feasibility call that you can arrange just to make sure it's a good fit. Uh, and then you can start the opportunity. Um, and one thing to note is we're always Im improving this process. So um, uh, if we notice that it's taking too long to match, we'll try something new to really accelerate that timeline. Uh, such as maybe in the future being able to reach out to volunteers directly uh, with your ask as well. Um, so before starting, uh, now that we have sourced the volunteer, um, before starting, there's a few questions you might want to ask yourself. So uh, what information does a volunteer need to start and, and who do they need to talk to? So making sure if, if you're the, the project manager, you have the capacity to work with this volunteer or team, or you have the right person, um, the right people in, in that conversation. Uh, does a volunteer have any obstacles? And something you will want to check in with uh, every, every week. Um, what, what have you been doing and, and what are your obstacles? And then is a volunteer comfortable uh, with the uh, commitment and the work environment? And do they have any access needs uh, to consider? Um, so this is, this is super important just because um, uh, it's really great to, to be clear about the commitment and, and what's available and, and have that uh, supportive environment as much as you can. Uh, I just want to answer the question, does Meaningful Work do any initial screening of volunteers? And yes, we do. Uh, so volunteers are all required to insert their LinkedIn. Uh, we will uh, do a little screening of sort of their past experience. Um, and we will not verify them until we have uh, sufficient um, sort of evidence to prove that they, they are really um, capable of doing um, great work and are, are, are trusted. 
Um, we also, yeah, we also do verify, yeah, nonprofits and companies as well, and and, and work really closely uh, with them before um, accepting them to the platform, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Um, and yeah, just to answer the question, can start startups utilize a service? Um, yeah, definitely. So startups on the company side, you can definitely uh, go in and volunteer. Uh, for uh, startup nonprofits, definitely we have a lot of um, startup nonprofits on our platform uh, that really benefit from from the service. Um, and um, if you're a, like a startup company that is looking for help, um, we if you're for profit, we don't really facilitate that. Um, but you can use other services like Ripen, where you can work with students um, through through those platforms. But we definitely work with startup nonprofits uh, to accept volunteers. Um, yeah, so the next step is really, again, managing progress. Um, so once you've got the opportunity started, uh, you wanna start managing progress. So do you have a, a process to document those learnings? Um, every step of the way, at every meeting, are you kind of coming out with these little nuggets of, you're always coming up with these little nuggets of really good information. Uh, do you have a way to really document that, those learnings through those meetings? Uh, being able to track the volunteer's progress, uh, so once you've set out those milestones and deliverables, uh, are are they being met? Are adjustments needed uh, to those? And thinking about how you can hand off the project after the completion, who's going to take on the next steps? Finally, uh, just a feature, the volunteer hours and notes can also be tracked in meaningful work. So you don't have to worry about that on your end of things. All right, um, so the last bit of the presentation is around measuring and celebrating impact. Uh, once the volunteer opportunity is done or even once it started and you've reached a big milestone, it's super important to start measuring and celebrating that impact that's created. So a few questions to consider. And I put these steps together because they're, they're actually really closely related. Uh, was the uh, project goal and metrics of success reached? Um, so those things that you set out in the beginning where they actually reached, did you come up with new metrics based on uh, the progression of the project? And what was that impact? Uh, could you measure it in hours? Could, could you measure it in those metrics that you've came up with in the beginning? Uh, were you able to serve more people? Were you able to save money? Uh, these are some, some ways to start measuring impact. And then how can you tell the story of this project? Um, and how does it relate to your audience? Um, so this is um, really... Uh, really a, a creative uh, part of the process. Um, and definitely the more storytelling you can give, the more images, the more video, uh, the more powerful it, it can be to your audience and more relatable. And um, where can I recognize uh, the work of the volunteer or the team? So um, it's really important to always recognize uh, folks that are able to contribute. And uh, some ways you can do that would be maybe giving them a recommendation on LinkedIn or uh, sharing the project. And, and I'll talk about how we can help you facilitate that as well. So our process to measure and celebrate impact is once an opportunity is completed, you have the opportunity to give some feedback to the volunteer and create a shareable impact story. Um, and, and recognizing that, you know, you'll have so much work to do, you probably don't want to create so many of these stories. We have, we'll have sort of a lot of the work filled out for you from that initial posting. And you just need to, to give a a little bit of feedback for the volunteer. Uh, volunteers can also give your organization feedback as well. Um, and you can create the shareable impact story that you can then put out on social media. And it's just a public uh, link to a website and that has all sort of the details, a bit of the story behind the, the project and or advising session or event. Um, and you can put it out there. Uh, if you need some help with measuring impact, we also have a workshop for that where we really look at um, it's a multi-step kind of process. You look at sort of your theory of change, uh, identify some of those core metrics that um, really uh, matter to you and how they align with some of the global metrics that you might be working towards as well. Um, again, uh, I just wanna share one story uh, that I think maybe is, is a little unconventional, but I thought it was a cool story to share. So we worked with um, uh, Habitat for Humanity Greater Vancouver, uh, and actually, they came to us with an ask of, hey, we need some drone footage recorded uh, for some of our um, uh, builds that we're doing and being able to tell the story of, of the land uh, 
that, that that is there. So they were able to recruit a skilled volunteer, Ben, who is um, actually able to, uh, he has his own drone, drone company and he joined our platform and he recorded some drone footage and uh, they were able to use that vi uh, into a video where they were able to start uh, launching a campaign to build housing in Coquitlam. Um, so this is what an impact story looked like, uh, just a summary of that impact story here. Um, and uh, some some really cool video that Habitat for Humanity is able to produce and, and tell that story. So definitely check out their their pages. It's it's really cool storytelling that that they do. Um, so after the opportunity, uh, it's really important to reflect. Um, how did the process go? Uh, what needs to change for next time? Uh, and then can you start including skill based volunteering into your strategic planning? Um, so recognizing that as, as a resource that your teams could use moving forward. Um, maintaining a relationship with past volunteers, um, definitely uh, being able to uh, re engage with them if they're open to it. Uh, it's always great to bring people on again because they have that in depth uh, knowledge of your organization and maybe they'll start with skill based volunteering and move on to a board role or a committee member role. Um, I know personally, I, I worked a lot with the Starfish Canada and, and they're, they work with uh, environmental uh, change makers across Canada and helping them build their platform and give them a voice. And I started off just as, as kind of a skill-based volunteer as a judge for one of their programs. And I moved on to becoming a board member and really getting into their equity, diversity and inclusion work. Um, so that was a cool pathway for me. And after my board term, I'm back to being a skill-based volunteer for them. Um, and then one one cool idea would be just to to really send an, an update on that project you worked on maybe six months or one year down the road, uh, just to see how that their work has impacted the organization. Because I think that that feeling of impact is, is really just keeps on giving. Uh, and finally, uh, working with companies. So we have companies on the platform and they have volunteers um, and this could could lead to you working more closely with corporate social responsibility departments and actually building partnerships. Uh, so most of the company entities are headed by an HR manager or a CSR manager, a corporate social responsibility manager, and they can see all the, the postings and the nonprofits and it's an opportunity to, to connect with them and, and build partnerships. And again, uh, when you're building partnerships, it's about understanding the key decision makers and, and, and what their needs are, what your wins are, and, and, and what their wins could be through a potential partnership. Um, so just some questions to, to kind of reflect on um, post uh, this, this presentation is, uh, where are your biggest gaps in capacity? Um, where do you see potential projects or advising sessions? Um, and how might you uh, work for, uh, work with companies in the future and, and what, what might that look like? Um, so just some some pieces to start th thinking about uh, moving forwards. And Jason has a question about, do you get requests from orgs for ongoing tech support type of help? Yeah, we definitely do. Um, and uh, we can definitely try to break that down more into um, sizable projects, or it could might be a, an ongoing role, a long-term role. Cool. Um, and a question from Joe, how do you recruit volunteers to the platform? Do you have partnerships with corporations? Or are you more focused on recruiting individuals? Uh, and what does that typical time commitment look like? Yes. So um, we are definitely doing both. Um, we believe it's uh, important to engage with companies, but it, it does take some time uh, in terms of getting them to adopt a program. Um, so that's why um, it, it's um, sort of um, we do a bit of both and, and the typical, uh, available time commitment, uh, it looks like around, um, five hours per week for some of the five to 10 hours per week for a project, um, base volunteer. And, um, for an advising session, it would be just sort of a couple hours a month as, as a men in a mentorship capability. Um, yeah. And, and many volunteers have sort of paid volunteer hours from their organization. So this could be maybe 20 to 40 hours over the year um, as paid volunteer time that they can take off. Um, and so that depends on the organization um, or the employee, but that's something that they are able to use. Um, what are some of the things uh, volunteers have had working with a nonprofit that you can recommend we work on? Yeah, so um, 
I, I think some things are, I think some issues that we've had um, as well as um, I think issues or recommendations. Yeah, so some issues around around that. Um, some issues could be around communication. So uh, when you are doing that initial feasibility call, just being clear about uh, what you need and, and what that uh, commitment would look like and just making sure the volunteer is, is comfortable there. Uh, I think that's key. And, and just being able to communicate with them uh, about timelines and, and when you're gonna get back to them and, and sticking to those uh, has been some issues that we've encountered in the past um, uh, that we we're still working on. Um, some recommendations. Um, again, I, I think um, some of the things, okay, got you, that was an issue. Um, and some, some, some things that volunteers have done successfully in the past. So uh, we've definitely had a lot of marketing advisors. Uh, so uh, for example, Orbis Canada wanted to really uh, market their uh, um, flight for the, the, the blind charity event where I think it was pull, um, they get companies to kind of pull the plane uh, as a team building act activity or fundraiser, but they wanted to do it uh, online this year. And so we had a marketing manager at Maximizer, which is a Vancouver company, come in and give them some really cool ideas as an advisor. So that that was really successful. Uh, and and this this uh, person Nicholas, he's been able to to help many other nonprofits as well with advising. Um, we've also had some team based opportunities uh, around um, around marketing and building up content and campaigns as well um, with Harmony Movement in Toronto. Um, another example of uh, a cool uh, project again with yeah with the drone work as well as uh, some HR advising so helping with online volunteer recruitment and setting up volunteer uh, recruitment policies uh, so that was from Sage Vancouver they were able to um, provide some some support there to um, the UBC Environment nonprofit um, yeah those are just some examples um, there's definitely more uh, that can be explored and and we'll definitely reach out to to make sure we can help meet those needs um, what are some suggestions for attracting younger volunteers um, yeah so that that's a great question um, I'll, I will think about that um, I, I think uh, attracting younger volunteers is um, per, possibly about understanding what their um, um, interest might be uh, and being able to, I think, tell the story when you're creating a posting. So something I forgot to cover was when you are creating that posting, are, are you able to tell the story that of the impact that will be created? So I think when folks are able to see that, you know, if I do work, do this work, this is the impact that will be created. There's a story behind it, something I really um, care about. Uh, making the, the, the sort of job posting more interesting and engaging can definitely help with that. Um, yeah, uh, and then the second question, what percentage of volunteers between 18 and 30? Uh, I think most of our volunteers are sort of between, I would say, um, 25 and uh, 50 um, right for, in terms of um, our volunteers. Uh, I don't have an exact breakdown by age, but I can definitely um, look into that. Um, and right now, um, we are sort of being able to onboard roughly um, 30 to 40 uh, volunteers per month. And, and that's sort of um, right now, but we are aiming to grow a lot in the fall uh, once things start to get back to normal. Cool. Um, there are a bunch of more questions, but I just wanna talk about some next steps and then I'll get to the rest of the questions. This is a, uh, a question in a group. Thank you so much everyone for diving right into the chat and we'll definitely come back to your question. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I just want to talk, chat, talk about some next steps, um, which could be getting started with Meaningful Work. Uh, you can definitely go to our website, app.meaningfulwork.xyz or app.meaningfultech.ca. Uh, they both work. Um, we just have two, um, one for the .ca domain. Um, being able to then go and then review sort of this talk, go to capacitycommons.org. There's tons of awesome activities on there. Uh, you can stay tuned for a recording of this presentation, a worksheet, and a checklist. Um, and there's, there'll also be an invitation to book some custom workshops, which we offer on a sliding scale in equity, diversity, inclusion, impact mapping, and navigating grants and online tools. 
Um, yeah, so thank you. This is uh, some of our team here, uh, and you can definitely contact us at this uh, at these email addresses, and we'll get back to you. Um, but yeah, I will kind of continue to answer the questions. In Whoop! Oh, we just lost him. Um, I'm sure he'll jump back in a moment. Um, but yeah, it looks like the next question is coming in actually from Alex. Alex, I'm going to give you the possibility of coming in on mic if you want to actually ask your question because I think it's a, it's a bit longer here. So I'm just going to go and give you those powers. Um, and yeah, and from here, I can certainly try and add others to have the presenter mode on. So if they want, they can come on camera and ask the question directly. Oops, I got lost for a second, but I think I'm back. Excellent. You're back. Um, so I think we've still got two questions coming up here. I know we've got one here from Alex right here, which is like sort of I recall from a former. If you want to read that out again, that'd be helpful. Cool. So uh, Alex says asking, I, I recall from a former slide, uh, you work with Do Some Good for access to organizations full of potential volunteers. Is some value add in working through Do Some Good as opposed to directly with meaningful work? As an organization, I think we would be more interested in active, being actively matched with potential skill aligned and value aligned um, opportunities for staff and volunteers, as opposed to a board volunteer uh, posting, uh, broad volunteer posting bulletin board. Yeah, um, so do some good. I, I mentioned uh, we don't have an active partnership with them, but I just kind of mentioned them as as another option uh, to to check out as um, as. Um, another option to, to post opportunities. Uh, I would say the sort of value add in uh, working direct, I think it, it might be, if you're looking for skill-based volunteers, volunteering specifically, I think meaningful work might be uh, a good place to start out with. And then if you need additional help, you can definitely check out, do some good. Um, yeah, just wanted to mention that as another option. Um, as a, an organization, you'd be interested in, yeah, I think, I think meaningful work would be, um, be really cool um, to to try out, especially as a company. Um, and we can definitely definitely chat about that uh, for for your unique organization. And the other thing is that you know nonprofits might be accepting help, but I think nonprofit organizations are so diverse, and many of them have staff that want to give back and and give back to other areas and other nonprofits. So we can definitely uh, keep you know add you in as as a company uh, or as an organization. And we're kind of working on that on that wording uh, just to make it more. Um, uh, inclusive and, and make it accessible for, for our, all organizations to engage with however way they want to engage. Um, and do I charge fees? Yes. So uh, with nonprofits for folks or organizations that are looking to um, uh, accept help, uh, we do not charge fees uh, for companies, uh, for profit companies, we do charge um, a per employee fee and that's to help them set up that employee volunteer program with these opportunities that are often quite hard to find and, uh, quite hard to scope out as well. So we do charge on the company side, um, but it is free for uh, nonprofits as well as individual volunteers. Amazing, great. That's really helpful to know um, and uh, makes a pretty low barrier. Um, so I've got another question that's come to me and for the rest of you, throw your questions into the chat in the meantime while I basically take up you know this last two minutes. Um, so when you're bringing someone through a project, um, what is the most common obstacle that leads to a stalled project? Like what are the things we should really watch out for? Um, so I think that setup is really important, making sure that you have a, that plan of how you want the project to proceed. Often you might start with a, a project and it doesn't have that complete plan or deliverables and the volunteer might get a little confused uh, on how to proceed and they might not actually meet uh, what you were expecting. So keeping that communication crisp and clear is, is, is super important as, as one of the, I would say probably one of the primary primary things is just communication and, and you know, being able to communicate, which is hard in, in this online world. So hopefully um, we are also building a bit more features in the future like chat just to make, to keep that flow more active. Um, but for now um, we, we, we try and, and, and kind of nudge both the volunteer and the organization every week or so just to check in. And I've got a follow-up question here around fees. So regarding fees, says Alexa, do you charge on the company side for when the company is seeking volunteers or when the company is looking to offer volunteers or both? Or like, how does that work? Yeah, so 
Um, just to like clarify on the fees, uh, we charge um, companies when they are looking to build a volunteer program and 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 find opportunities for their staff. Um, so it, for companies, it's a subscription program where uh, employees can enter in and they can volunteer and they can uh, track their impact and they can find these meaningful opportunities and the company can kind of uh, share that impact and uh, to their channel. So uh, it's more for uh, being able to create a, an employee volunteer program is what we charge for and everything else around that is free for the nonprofits. So what's your ability to scale right now? Um, what if like all, you know, all 21 people right now come to you and say like, yes, I want a placement. Like, where are you at right now in your ability to like actually do that matching? Is it sort of restricted in these early days or how does that work? Yeah, um, so definitely um, we have been able to create matches uh, for many of the opportunities. Um, it is a little restricted. It might take maybe, you know, two weeks uh, or one to two weeks to find that that right volunteer. Um, but as we kind of grow on both sides, it'll be much faster and, and easier to, to to create that match just because we'll have that available database. So it's sort of a, it's a, in a way it's a marketplace. The more it grows, the more faster and, and more op a variety of, of folks will be that are ready to help at any moment. So basically everyone here should go get that account created, make start that process uh, because of that will sort of help turbocharge the marketplace um and you know and you get to take advantage of the fact that there is th this process you can follow as opposed to having to like sort of manage a whole new pro bono volunteer process yourself without having like all the structure and best practices built around it exactly thank you so we have four minutes left which means i want to just do a final closing statement but raj thank you so much really excited to hear about this new platform, especially that is coming out of here in Vancouver, um, in the lower mainland. Um, so it's nice to see like, you know, a cool new platform emerging here. Um, and if anything ever goes awry, we know we can always like show up at your doorstep and like knock on the door and get your attention. Oh, sorry, Raj, we've got yeah. perfect, you're back. Yeah, always available for, for any emails or any questions. And yeah, I'm just going to pop some links into the chat uh, and then also uh, keep uh, keep an eye out because uh, I will send Eli some resources to send out to everyone here. Thanks so much. Right. I really appreciate it. So keep your eyes on your email inbox. So here's what the future looks like. September is going to have two events because uh, we're just busting with good ideas people have been coming to us with awesome proposals so in september 9th we're going to be looking at a number of different no code tools that you can use to start doing automation within your work so that'll include some platforms like airtable it's going to include zapier um, and it's going to include a couple other basically free or low-cost tools you can use to start automating your workflows to make yourself feel a bit more productive because we all have lots of busy work to be done in our lives. And on September 14th, we're going to bring back a repeat presenter who's going to talk about Google Analytics. And it's a big, terrifying beast of a product. But here's the secret. You don't need to know all of it. We're just going to show you the 25% of it that's actually useful for you to start measuring your impact and answering the core questions about what are people doing on your website? How are they interacting with you? And we'll just ignore the stuff that doesn't apply to you as a nonprofit and is the kind of thing that's only the thing that like people who have a giant full-time team doing this kind of work need to focus on. So that is going to be the future. And before I let you go, of course, I wanna you know ask once again for your contributions. So if you've got a great event idea that should be happening in the future, let us know. Or if you wanna get involved in any way, reach out to me and I would love to put you to work. But with that, Let's uh, let's let it go. Like you know, you can uh, move on with the rest of your day. Really grateful for your time, and we'll have the recording and all the other materials coming back at you within the next couple of days by Monday for sure.
and let me hit that stop recording button. Boom.